My husband and best friend had a two-year affair. I posted about it online and ruined their lives. Then I found out he was cheating with five other women and stealing from his job. I'm Anna, 28 female, and I've been married to John, 30 male, for five years. We have a daughter, Emily, who's three. My best friend since high school, Sarah, 29 female, has always been a big part of our lives. She was even my maid of honor at our wedding. John and I met in college. We were in the same study group for a difficult class, and we hit it off right away. He was funny, smart, and always knew how to make me laugh even when I was stressed about exams. We started dating in our junior year and got married a year after graduation. Sarah and I have been friends since we were 14. We met on the first day of high school and just clicked. We've been through everything together, crushes, breakups, family drama, you name it. When I started dating John, Sarah was so supportive. She always said we were perfect for each other. John works as a financial analyst at a big company in the city. He's always been ambitious and hardworking. I'm an elementary school teacher. I love working with kids, and it's been great having summers off to spend with Emily. Our marriage wasn't perfect, but I thought we were happy. We had date nights every week, took family vacations, and rarely fought. John was a hands-on dad and seemed to adore Emily. Sarah was always around too, babysitting Emily or joining us for dinner. I never suspected anything was going on. A month ago, everything fell apart. I was using John's laptop to look up a recipe because mine was charging. A message popped up from Sarah. I didn't mean to snoop, but something about the way it was phrased caught my eye. I clicked on it and saw a whole conversation history between them. At first, I thought I was misunderstanding. The messages were flirty and intimate in a way that went beyond friendship. But as I kept reading, I realized the horrible truth. John and Sarah had been having an affair for two years. I confronted John as soon as he got home from work. He tried to deny it at first, saying I was misinterpreting things. But when I showed him the messages, he broke down and admitted everything. He said it started as a drunken mistake at a party when I was out of town visiting my parents. They kissed, and things escalated from there. John swore he loved me and Emily more than anything. He said the affair didn't mean anything and begged me not to leave him. He promised to end things with Sarah immediately and go to couples counseling. But I was too hurt and angry to even consider it. I told him to get out and not come back until I figured out what I wanted to do. Then I called Sarah. Like John, she tried to deny it at first. But when I told her I'd seen the messages, she confessed. She cried and said she was so sorry, that she never meant for it to happen, and that she would do anything to make it right. I hung up on her. I spent the next few days in a daze. I couldn't eat or sleep. I kept replaying memories in my head, wondering how I could have been so blind. All those times Sarah came over for dinner or babysat Emily, had they been sneaking around behind my back then? I thought about all the lies they must have told. All the times John said he was working late, or Sarah cancelled plans with me last minute. How long would it have gone on if I hadn't found out? Would they have ever told me the truth? The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. These were the two people I trusted most in the world, and they had betrayed me in the worst way possible. They had made a fool of me for years. I didn't want to keep their secret or let them control the narrative. So after a few days, I decided to tell everyone what had happened. I made a long post on Facebook explaining everything, how long the affair had been going on, how I found out, and how devastated I was. I included screenshots of some of their messages as proof. The response was immediate and overwhelming. My phone was flooded with messages from friends and family offering support and expressing shock and anger at John and Sarah. John's family was furious with him, especially his parents who had always treated me like a daughter. Sarah's boyfriend of three years broke up with her on the spot. John and Sarah both called me, livid that I had exposed them publicly. John said I had no right to share their private messages. He said I was vindictive and trying to ruin his life. Sarah said she might lose her job because her boss saw the post. She said I had gone too far and that she would never forgive me for this. I told them both that they ruined their own lives by cheating. I said they had no right to expect me to keep their secret and they should have thought about the consequences before having an affair. I blocked both their numbers after that. Some of our mutual friends have taken sides. Most are supporting me, but a few have said I went too far by posting everything publicly. They say I should have kept it private and that I'm just as bad as John and Sarah for airing all our dirty laundry. My parents are furious with John and Sarah. They want me to divorce John immediately and press charges against both of them for emotional distress. John's parents have been calling and texting, begging me to take down the post and give John another chance. They say he made a mistake but he's a good man and father. I don't know what to do about my marriage. Part of me still loves John and wants to try to work things out for Emily's sake. But another part of me doesn't think I can ever trust him again. How can I look at him without seeing his betrayal? How can I let him touch me knowing he's been with Sarah? As for Sarah, our friendship is over. 20 years of sisterhood destroyed because she couldn't keep her hands off my husband. I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive her. The level of deception required to carry on an affair with your best friend's husband for two years is just staggering to me. I'm worried about how this will affect Emily. She keeps asking where daddy is and when he's coming home. I don't know how to explain this to a three-year-old. I don't want her to grow up without a father, but I also don't want her to think it's okay for men to treat women this way. Financially, I'm also in a tough spot. John was the primary breadwinner. 
My teacher's salary isn't enough to cover our mortgage and Emily's preschool on its own. If we get divorced, I'll probably have to sell the house and move to a smaller place. The thought of uprooting Emily's whole life because of John and Sarah's selfishness makes me so angry. I'm also dealing with intense trust issues now. If my husband and best friend could betray me like this, how can I ever trust anyone again? I find myself questioning all my other friendships, wondering if anyone else knew and didn't tell me. It's an awful way to live. Despite all this, I don't think I did anything wrong by exposing the affair. They betrayed me in the worst way possible, and I had every right to tell the truth. Why should I have to carry the burden of their secret? Why should I have to see them around town, pretending everything is fine, knowing what they did? But the backlash has made me start to question myself. Am I just as bad as them for airing our dirty laundry? Should I have handled it privately? Did I go too far by posting the screenshots? I keep second-guessing every decision I've made since finding out about the affair. I don't know what the future holds. Right now I'm just trying to stay strong for Emily and take things one day at a time. I have an appointment with a lawyer next week to discuss my options. I'm in therapy trying to process everything. But I still feel lost and betrayed. So Reddit, Ida for exposing my husband's affair and potentially ruining their lives? Did I go too far, or were my actions justified given what they did to me? I could really use some outside perspective on this whole mess. Update 1. It's been two weeks since my original post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their supportive comments. It really helped me feel less alone during this difficult time. The day after I made my post, I got a call from a woman named Rachel. She said she had seen my Facebook post and needed to talk to me. We met for coffee, and she dropped a bombshell, she had also been having an affair with John for the past year. I was completely shocked. I thought I knew the full extent of John's betrayal, but it turned out there was even more. Rachel showed me text messages and photos proving the affair. She said she had no idea John was married when they started seeing each other. She thought he was divorced. As soon as she found out about me and Emily, she ended things. Rachel told me that she met John at a work conference last year. He wasn't wearing his wedding ring and told her he was recently divorced with a young daughter. They exchanged numbers and started talking regularly. Eventually, they began meeting up whenever John was in Rachel's city for work. I felt like I had been punched in the gut all over again. I called John and confronted him about Rachel. He admitted to it immediately and said there had been other women too, at least five or six over the course of our marriage. He said he had a sex addiction and needed help. I was beyond furious. I couldn't believe the extent of John's deception. All those business trips and late nights at the office, how many of them were actually spent with other women? I updated my Facebook post with the new information about Rachel and the other affairs. John called me screaming, saying I was trying to destroy his life. He said his boss had seen the updated post and he was going to be fired. He threatened to sue me for defamation. I told him he destroyed his own life by being a serial cheater. The next day, I got served with divorce papers. John was suing me for defamation and wanted full custody of Emily, claiming I was unstable and vindictive. He said my Facebook post showed I wasn't thinking about Emily's best interests. I immediately hired a lawyer to fight back. Sarah also threatened to sue me for ruining her reputation. She said she had been fired from her job and couldn't find new work because the Facebook post came up whenever employers googled her name. She said her parents had cut her off financially and she was about to be evicted from her apartment. I felt a little bad about Sarah's situation, but I still didn't think I had done anything wrong by telling the truth. I told her that she made her own choices and had to live with the consequences. I reminded her that she chose to have an affair with her best friend's husband for two years. Any fallout from that was on her, not me. Things got even more complicated when John's mother called me. She said that John had attempted suicide after losing his job due to my Facebook post. He was in the hospital recovering. She begged me to take down the post and said I was tearing the family apart. I felt conflicted. I never wanted John to hurt himself, despite how angry I was at him. But I also felt like taking down the post would be letting him off the hook for his actions. And I was angry that his mother seemed more concerned about the post than about John's infidelity and lies. In the end, I decided to keep the post up but edit it to remove some of the more personal details. I still wanted the truth out there, but I didn't want to push John to hurt himself again. I also didn't want Emily to someday read all the gory details about her father's affairs. I'm struggling to balance my anger and desire for justice with concern for John's mental health and our daughter's well-being. I don't know what the right thing to do is anymore. I just want this nightmare to be over. The divorce proceedings are moving forward. My lawyer says I have a strong case for primary custody given John's infidelity and current mental state. But John is fighting it hard. He's trying to paint me as unstable and attention-seeking because of the Facebook posts. Financially, things are tight. I had to take out a loan to cover the lawyer fees. I'm picking up extra tutoring work on weekends to make ends meet. I'm probably going to have to sell our house and move to a smaller apartment with Emily. Emily is struggling with all the changes. She misses her dad and doesn't understand why he's not living with us anymore. I've been taking her to play therapy to help her process everything. It breaks my heart to see how John's actions have affected her. I'm also in therapy myself, trying to work through all my anger and trust issues. It's hard to imagine ever being in a relationship again after this. How can I ever trust a man not to cheat on me? How can I trust my own judgment when I was so wrong about John and Sarah? 
I've cut off contact with most of our mutual friends. I couldn't stand the pitying looks and whispered conversations that stopped when I entered a room. I've leaned heavily on my family for support. My sister has been amazing, coming over to help with Emily and just letting me vent. Looking back, I still don't regret exposing the affairs publicly. If I had kept it quiet, I never would have found out about Rachel and the other women. John would have kept lying and cheating, and I would have been in the dark. At least now I know the truth, as painful as it is. But I do wonder sometimes if I could have handled it differently. Maybe I should have confronted John and Sarah privately first before going public. Maybe I should have left out some of the more graphic details. I don't know. I was just so angry and hurt, I wanted everyone to know what they had done. I'm trying to focus now on healing and being the best mom I can be to Emily. Some days are harder than others. Sometimes I still wake up forgetting for a split second, and then it all comes crashing back. But I'm taking it one day at a time and trying to stay strong for my daughter. Update 2. It's been a month since my last update, and things have only gotten more complicated. The divorce proceedings are in full swing, and it's getting ugly. John is fighting hard for full custody of Emily, claiming that I'm unstable and unfit to be a mother because of how I handled the affair revelation. His lawyer is arguing that my Facebook post and subsequent updates show that I'm vindictive and don't have Emily's best interests at heart. They're trying to paint me as an attention seeker who cares more about public drama than protecting my daughter. To make matters worse, Sarah has made good on her threat to sue me. She's claiming that my post caused her severe emotional distress and financial harm. She says she's been diagnosed with depression and anxiety as a result of the public humiliation. She's asking for $500,000 in damages. I had to hire another lawyer to deal with Sarah's lawsuit on top of the divorce proceedings. The legal fees are piling up, and I'm drowning in debt. I had to ask my parents for a loan just to keep up with the mortgage payments. But the biggest shock came last week. I was going through some old files in our home office, looking for financial documents for the divorce, when I found a hidden folder on John's computer. What I discovered inside made me sick to my stomach. The folder contained financial records showing that John had been embezzling money from his company for years. He had stolen hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund his affairs and lavish gifts for his mistresses. There were records of hotel stays, jewelry purchases, and even a down payment on a secret apartment. I was stunned. Not only had John been unfaithful, but he was also a thief. I didn't know what to do with this information. Part of me wanted to turn him into the police immediately. But another part of me worried about how it would affect Emily if her father went to jail. I spent days agonizing over what to do. I consulted with my lawyer, who advised me that I could be seen as complicit if I didn't report it. I also worried about the company coming after me for the stolen money if they found out I knew and didn't say anything. After a lot of soul-searching, I finally decided to tell John's company about what I had found. I couldn't in good conscience keep that secret. It felt wrong to let him get away with stealing all that money on top of everything else he'd done. The company immediately fired John and is pressing charges against him. He's facing serious prison time if convicted. They're also suing him to recover the stolen funds. John is furious. He showed up at the house, screaming that I've completely ruined his life now and that I'm depriving Emily of her father. He said he'll never forgive me for this and that he'll make sure Emily knows it's my fault she doesn't have a dad. I had to call the police to get him to leave. I'm exhausted from all the drama and legal battles. I just want to move on with my life and focus on being a good mother to Emily. But it seems like every time I think things can't get any worse, they do. The stress is really getting to me. I've lost weight and I'm not sleeping well. My doctor prescribed anti-anxiety medication to help me cope. I'm trying to stay strong for Emily, but some days it's really hard to get out of bed. I'm starting to wonder if I made the right choice in exposing everything publicly. The fallout has been so much worse than I ever imagined. But I still believe people deserve to know the truth. I just hope someday this will all be behind us and Emily and I can have some peace. My family has been incredibly supportive through all of this. My parents are helping out financially as much as they can, and my sister comes over almost every day to help with Emily. I don't know what I'd do without them. I'm glad you have your family's support. Update 3. It's been six months since this nightmare began, and I'm finally starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. The divorce is finalized. Despite John's best efforts, I was awarded primary custody of Emily. The judge saw through his claims that I was unstable and recognized that I was acting in Emily's best interests. John got supervised visitation rights, but he's barely using them. He's too caught up in his legal troubles. John was convicted of embezzlement and is now serving a five-year prison sentence. It's been hard explaining to Emily why her daddy is in jail, but I'm doing my best to be honest with her in an age-appropriate way. She sees a child psychologist once a week to help her process everything. Sarah's lawsuit against me was dismissed. The judge ruled that since everything I posted was true, I couldn't be held liable for the consequences to her reputation. She's moved out of state to try to start over. I haven't heard from her since the ruling, and I hope I never do again. I've started a new job at a private school in a neighboring town. The pay is better than my old teaching job, which has helped ease some of the financial strain. I've also moved to a smaller house with Emily. It was hard leaving our old home, but this fresh start has been good for us. I've gone completely no contact with John and Sarah. John still tries to contact me sometimes through his family, but I shut it down immediately. I have no interest in hearing from either of them ever again. 
John's parents have finally stopped trying to guilt me into forgiveness and are focusing on supporting Emily instead. Emily is adjusting well to our new life. She still asks about John sometimes, but less often now. She's made new friends at her new school and is doing well in her classes. Watching her resilience has been a bright spot in all of this. I've started dating again, very casually. It's been hard to trust, but my therapist encouraged me to put myself out there. I met a nice guy at a single parent support group. We've been on a few coffee dates. I'm taking things extremely slowly, but it's nice to be reminded that there are good men out there. Looking back, I still don't regret exposing the affair publicly. It was painful and messy, but it allowed me to discover the full extent of John's deception and ultimately protect myself and Emily. If I had kept it quiet, who knows how much more he would have stolen or how many more women he would have deceived. That said, I've learned some hard lessons about the consequences of putting everything on social media. While I don't regret telling the truth, I do sometimes wish I had been more selective about what details I shared publicly. I've made all my social media accounts private now and I'm much more careful about what I post. I'm focusing now on healing and building a new life for myself and Emily. It's not the life I imagined, but I'm determined to make the best of it. I'm grateful for the support I've received throughout this ordeal and hopeful for what the future holds. To anyone else going through something similar, stay strong and don't let anyone convince you to stay silent about abuse or betrayal. The truth will set you free, even if the path to get there is difficult. But be careful about how you tell that truth. Social media can be a double-edged sword. I'm not the same person I was six months ago. I'm stronger now, but also more cautious. I've learned who my true friends are and who I can really count on. Most importantly, I've learned that I'm capable of getting through even the worst situations. Emily and I are going to be okay. It's been a hard road, but we're making it. And at the end of the day, that's what matters most.